uh, go to the attribute editor and go to the transform attributes line and we want to transform for this example the y-axis and the z-axis of the controller. So check out that it's uh, zeroed out again. Right click into it, create new expression, yeah. So the expression editor comes up, uh, we select here the um, attribute we want to we want to um, give the values of the audio wave node 2 so uh, control draw audio driven point or period translate y is and now we need the name of our audio wave speaking test node audio wave speaking test point out and if we click create um, it should work result expression 1 so it worked and as we see something strange has happened yeah it's not so strange the audio node has some um, has some value the recording isn't totally quiet so we have a starting value and to reset this we check our starting value it's 0 0.469 at the moment so to uh, zero it out we will um, add here 0 0.469 and make it negative and add it to the speaking test output and if we edit this it should be in the starting position all right and as i said before we want to drive the uh, z-axis as well so we can copy this line of code go to a new line and paste it change translate y, y to translate z or z and um, can first click edit and check our first test how it looks hello there this is a speaking test yeah that's not exactly hello what there. we want to achieve what happens is uh, this is speaking especially test. the z is far too much <laughs> amplitude that's far 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 too much so we will um, multiply it by 0 0.2 for example now it's not that much anymore next thing we are gonna do is uh, we will leave this expression editor open if we need it again but we go back to our hypershade and the audio wave speaking node which uh, speaking test node which should already be here and we play around with the sample size we will use uh, 64 samples for this one hello there this and is now a speaking it's test not uh, having these hello there really this is a speaking big, test uh, amplitude breaks and for hello now there. it'll this be is enough to use 64 for this example so uh, the input w works yeah, from the speaking side all right now the attribute editor uh, now let's get back to our controller and just 0 0.2 seems too little now let's give it 0 0.8 well we can the speaking see test. some movement in the z axis here Hello there. Let's just is speaking give it some subtle movement, not just on the y-axis. Okay, for now I'm okay with the look of it. And what we're gonna do now is we will separate um, the animation of it. So we will bake it. We select the uh, driven jaw, so the audio wave jaw and go to edit keys bake simulation and the 
option box and open it. Go to our channel box and select translate Y and translate Z. Go here, hierarchy selected, channels from channel box, uh, time range in the time slider. Yeah, that's right, back to base animation and the rest is okay. We will click on bake and it will have one go through. And as we can see now, uh, now the driven controller has keyframes on it and okay, is not is longer speaking. driven by the audio wave. This enables us to work with the keyframes on it and refine it a bit. So we will go to the graph editor. I will use the split uh, screen right here to clean up so we can see what we are doing right now. Zoom in. As you can see at the beginning there's just a bit noise up and down so we can select these keys and delete them. And at the end where the, uh, where the audio file stops there's a break and as I said before it's got uh, a null value of 0 0.469 I guess it was before and as the audio file is, uh, has ended there's nothing more so it drops to minus that value so we can delete it and if we now play it back hello there this is a speaking test we can see that the uh, beginning and the end are fixed next thing is it's far too jittery in the animation because every frame it evaluates new and that's far too much for us right now what we're gonna do is we select for both translate X and Y yeah, not X, Z and Y mm. select the curves and go to keys uh, no curves and now we've got uh, several possibilities what we can do it's always testing what works best for your audio file I guess I first used a simplify curve and you can play around with the, the time tolerance 0 0.05 is the default value and works best for uh, my audio files the value tolerance can be set and just check it out if it looks some like something you want hello there this is a speaking test no that's far too laggy I had audio files where it worked but this one is not right for it for this approach so um, I will use the resample curve uh, again on the curves here um, it's already set from my test before time step 0.2 so it will re, uh, re evaluate the animation every two frames not every frame like now so that um, that will simplify our curve by two and we will use the resample type linear interpolation because I found out for this uh, special audio file it works the best or has the nicest um, result so we click resample and as we can see here the curves are now uh, much smoother we can also, yeah, it's on auto tangents, spline tangents makes it sometimes a bit better. It's a lot of uh, testing and playing around, but in the end, you will have the speech animation if you've done it once after, I guess, 30 minutes in a raw, raw rough version, and after that, you can um, make it better by some things like playing around in the graph editor. I'll play it back right now. Hello there, this is a speaking test. Hello there, this is a speaking test. Okay, and now you could go and say the in the translate Z, I'm not so uh, uh, not so keen about uh, this motion here and just move it around a bit. And I guess Maya is currently crashing on me. I hope not. 
okay you can uh, use these tool here there's a uh, lattice to form keys or you can use the region tool uh, now it works uh, to scale or move keys in some ways and just play around with it so as you can see here that's far too much down here this is yeah. and like always with animation it's a lot of try and error and doing stuff uh, we'll leave this here for now play around with it yourself one last thing to clean it up a bit and make it nicer is we have the extra handle here and this can be used to add uh, additional translation on the jaw and it's unlikely that the character will start with an open mouth so we go to our first frame and move this here so that the mouth is closed we can rotate it a bit give it a bit more natural look I guess yeah or not and keyframe it here wait till the first mouth open animation comes slightly before we will set a keyframe and then go to its standard position you could add more details right here but I just kind of want to show you the uh, approach I had before now as you can see here there are some frames of silence there we will close the mouth again so before it set a keyframe move it again closed set a new keyframe and there he will open the mouth again so zero it out new keyframe and so on and at the end we will have them close his mouth again set a keyframe there, go to the first frame, middle mouse drag some frames later to maybe 81 and key in again and now we should have some something that's looped and working hello there this is a speaking test hello there this is a speaking test okay I hope you could learn something from my approach. It's not the best thing, but it will save my ass on this and hopefully some coming projects. If you got any questions, leave it in the comment sections and I'll get to it when I have the time. Okay, thank you.